Hello, I'm Tim Loy, and this is a recording of a um, page process for a new page for my comic book, Mr. Unpronounceable. Um, this is actually going to be uh, a story included in a book that I hope to put out um, at the end of the year, which has a working title of Mr. Unpronounceable and the Infinity of Nightmares. Um, and um, yeah, this is how I make my pages. Um, I use Manga Studio 5 and I uh, start off with um, a grid. I'm working on um, on the grid at the moment, which is uh, you know something that I've done in the past um, to greater and lesser degrees, but um, this entire book, um, probably bar um, a page or two is going to be on the eight um, landscape grid, um, eight panel grid. Um, it's I find it a good way to sort of just get into it um, without having to worry too much about crazy layouts and things. Um, as you can see, I've sort of, you know, uh, when I'm penciling, um, I just kind of get stuck in. I'm not really sure if um, I knew exactly what I was doing with this page. I think I had a very rough thumbnail um, next to me when I was drawing it, but, you know, as you can see, I'm sort of experimenting as I've gone along. Um, you know, I sort of try and get a panel pencil at a time um, without jumping back and forth too much. Um, it's, Lord knows I do enough jumping back and forward um, this is a, a prison guard um, character who um, is marching these various Mr. Unpronounceable clones um, off to their doom or some sort of uncertain fate down a um, muddy, dusty, muddy and dusty um, country road. Um, they're in chains. Um, as yet, their crimes are undisclosed, but be sure that they were awful uh, <laughs> and um, yeah so the biggest part of the the process the thing that takes the longest um, especially on a page like this which is quite detailed with all of this um, you know background detail and, and trees and leaves and, and long grass and things is the inking um, the inking can be very time-consuming I've become very um, and or attentive about every single line. Um, you know, um, I, I find that working digitally is a really um, good thing to do for me because um, I would end up being this anal anyway about my my line work if I was doing it traditionally, but it would just take me longer. Um, it's a bit of a double, it's a bit of a double edged sword though because you know with the ability to zoom in and you know. Um, backspace, you can end up becoming, um, you know, spending too long on, uh, on stuff that doesn't really matter. You know, I, I find myself zooming into these tiny little areas and, you know, every single line has got to be correct. Um, I'm trying to be a bit looser with stuff. As you can see with these, this grass that's happening, I'm doing it pretty fast. I'm not really, you know, penciling each, each line there. Um, this character here was um, originally in my mind going to be some sort of robot um, gas mask kind of kind of figure. Um, then I decided I, I wanted to give him a lot more expression that is available for you know something that doesn't have facial features. Um, he was going to have little goggles at first, but then I decided no, give him eyes, um, give him pupils, make him you know give him some humanity. As such, um, a lot of the protagonists, or sorry, the the antagonists um, in Mr. Unpronounceable comics tend to be um, alien, sort of featureless. A lot of the, the dialogue that comes out of them is in sort of hieroglyphs, so you can't read it. So you only really have Mr. Unpronounceable to translate for you. Um, but, you know, it's good now and then to put some sort of more human type characters in. Um, 
Yeah, and uh, this is an interesting page, I suppose, as well, because it's the the first time where I've had more than one Mr. Unpronounceable in the same place, um, let alone five or six, or however, however many end up being in this chain gang. Um, you know, there are multiple versions of reality occurring layered on top of each other in, in these books, and within those multiple layers of reality you have multiple Mr. Unpronounceables running around, getting up to their different adventures, sometimes crossing paths, um, most times when they do, finding a way to extinguish, um, you know, each other, um, you know, there's always, one of them always comes out on top, although I don't think Mr. Unpronounceables ever really come out on top, um, usually things go horribly wrong, um, you know, maybe not sooner than later, but eventually. Um, yeah, this, this page is the first page um, in a probably what's likely to be four or five page story. Um, at this point, in my mind, it's got something to do with uh, cultists in the long grass, they're, they're going to be forced, or a couple of them are going to be forced to venture off the road into the wilderness. Um, you know, I, that sort of imagery of like, you know, prison escapees kind of running away from the chain gang. It's quite fun to play with um, tropes like that, um, and, and many others in these these strips, you know, it's sort of Mr. Unpronounceable is such a well, predictably unpredictable character that I, I find it amusing to sort of throw him into situations which, you know, are sort of pre-existing um, ones within, you know, film or literature or television and see what he does or see what happens, you know, in this world, which quite often the, the, the thing that you expect is um, turned on its head. Um, so this is kind of a nice panel. Um, Kind of fun to to draw. I do like doing big kind of landscapey panels like this, and you know it's um, it's important to set set a scene, um, do that as quickly as possible. Especially you know when you when you're planning on a four or five page strip, you know you you're not going to be too expository for too long because you've only got so much time to tell your little story. Um, and yeah, I mean they, this is where the time goes, you know, mostly just every little leaf, every little blade of grass, um, you know, I realise that when somebody reads this comic, they, you know, they'll, they'll take that panel in, and, you know, a second, probably, um, they won't spend time adventuring around the page with their eyes, um, but, you know, if, if you don't draw it, then it, it isn't, it isn't something that, uh, you know, characters can walk through, and, I don't know, I, I guess it keeps me off the streets. <laughs> this whole page took me um, in excess of 10, 10 hours, maybe 12 all up, I'm told. Um, and this now is the third stage of the process, which um, involves just blocking in all the grayscale. Um, I use a combination of um, a, a fill tool to sort of fill in the areas that are blocked off and as you can see there, there's some nice, um, uh, you know, real media brushes that I use for sort of details around the, the eyes and sort of shadows. Um, that's an Indian ink brush, which um, I believe comes with Manga Studio 5. Um, it's pretty good. It's sort of a bit of a go-to for me. Um, at this point in time, I'm using that mostly, but also some um, really nice wash brushes that... Um, come in a set that is made by a guy called Ray Frendon. Um, it's worth anybody's while who's using Mega Studio to to get all of his brushes. I mean, you know, I don't use all of them, but they're, you know, they're cheap to buy um, and really handy, um, especially the real media ones. I've had a lot of fun with them. Um, little details like that with the, knocking the teeth out of his face, you know, like that's, that's a decision that you make late in the game, you know, I, I tend to sort of make decisions as I go, um, generally keep things fun. Um, yeah, 
So this page is sort of nearing its conclusion now. I think this is the last panel, um, blocking in all of my value and grayscale. Um, these comics are all black and white grayscale, um, except for the color, the covers. Um, part of that is time, but most of it is money. It's you know it's just too expensive for publishers to do in color. Um, of course, you know there's always the web, but um, you know it's something I might do a bit further down the track. Um, more color work at this point. I'm just trying to get another book done. Um, probably want it to be about 160 pages plus, um, as big as my last book, which was Mr. Unpronounceable and the Sect of the Bleeding Eye, um, which is available on um, Book Depository and Amazon and Comixology, and also um, from, if you're in Australia, if you buy it from my publisher or um, in-store, um, New Zealand too, we're distributed through Madman Entertainment, so yeah, and that is the finished page, all done, and ready for me to move on to probably an entirely unrelated page um, in another comic, um, as I tend to jump around a lot. Thanks for watching and listening to me ramble. Um, I will um, post some more videos soon. Um, you know, like, favorite, etc. Links are below.